Uh, <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to the Belgrade Planning Board meeting of uh, April 18th. Uh, regularly scheduled meeting. And my name is Richard Baker. I'll uh, be serving as your chairman tonight because the uh, uh, Sarah, our real chairman, is gone and our vice chairman is gone. So uh, I'll be doing the duties tonight. Uh, first, we'll do a roll call so we can know who uh, is all here, uh, starting with Penny. Penny Morrell. Peter Tarkin. Richard Baker. Nick Sicaro. Craig Alexander. And Hans Rasmussen. And if you could also in the audience, because we're recording this and our secretary is listening, so she needs to know who else is at the meeting tonight. So Dana Lavi, David Lavi, Dana, Dana, yeah. Dana. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Jen Klaus, yeah. Nate Klaus, Bill Hudson. I didn't catch your first name, Nate. Nate, yep. okay. Are you Dana Lavi that was in Duncan Morrell's class in school? 1990, that's long, Pete. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 91. Uh, okay. Huh. Oh, I'll be back to the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was me. <laughs> the only one around. Nice to see you. Yeah. yeah. We have two yeah. things on the agenda tonight, two shoreline zoning applications. One of them is one we took up uh, two weeks ago, and there was some question regarding whether or not we had a, uh, and this is, I was not at the meeting, um, so I gathered stuff from the whatever was reported at the meeting and um, information since then. And as I understand it, there was an issue as to whether or not the proposed uh, woodshed was a legally existing non-conforming use or an illegally, illegally existing non-conforming use uh, uh, structure, not use structure. And... Uh, has everybody had a uh, chance to read the attorney's opinion? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can really decipher it that much. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Pardon me, Senator? Yeah, he just want to sidestep the issue that Well, I, I think in, in the end, I think he, he well, at least my understanding, well, Penny, go ahead first. Well, my understanding was um, because there's no documentation of a permit, um, it's to be considered a new application. That's how I read the uh, memo too, is that they're, they're, the applicant is responsible for uh, providing proof yeah. or whatever that the structure was built uh, prior to the ordinance standards. and. Yeah. Um, the applicant uh, basically said it was built in 1980 something. I don't have that number right in front of me. Uh, so uh, my my interpretation of it is that we have a structure that is is not a was not legally built at the time because it didn't have a permit or can't prove that it's a permit. So. I think we need to treat this as a uh, a new structure, uh, in, and in which case it would have to be set back to uh, the setback standard of uh, the ordinance. So, yes. I don't know when the ordinance came into being, but I understood that the building was done before we had the ordinance. Yeah. I so think, I had think a that's from, they had a picture, I believe, from back before the ordinance. That was after shoreline zoning into effect. Oh, the picture was. Yeah. Oh, I thought that picture was from the 80s or whatever they had said. 92 is when he purchased it. And that's when the photos were done. No, he purchased it in the Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that expansion with the photos was done in 92. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, when was the wood ship, ship built? Was it <coughs> built before he purchased it or mm -hmm. afterwards? Right after he purchased the building. He's saying 88 for that. Anyway, that, that was my interpretation. I guess I'd open the 
floor to uh, Mr. Hudson to if there's any new information that you'd like us to, to well, hear. Well, I read the attorney's report also and it said um, it would be supported by evidence, which can be testimony, pictures, or prior approvals. There's no prior approvals, but there's testimony from the owner that it was built um, before the ordinance went into effect. Well, the ordinance went into effect in 1979. Oh, I thought it was 94. Yeah. Oh, what? When? The ordinance went into effect in 1989. When? There were the Shoreland zoning ordinance was in effect in the 70s. Right. But in 1989, it was changed yeah. quite a bit. And this building was back. When was that shed done? We figured. We knew figure, I think. Well, he's the only that, like, right after we moved in, that. We had 88, We got to figure out when because we, I thought, in here in this uh, letter, the attorney did say 1989, right? Or did he mention that? Did, did the attorney mention that? Yeah, the I think so. Nothing about 89. Well, so they mentioned in the letter that they believe the shed was built in 89, 88 yeah, okay. or 89. Right. But if we go back historically in the, 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 the ordinances, when I know when I moved up here, okay, I built in 19 in, in the right after the latter part of 89. I had my permit done a little bit right after 89, something like that. And the setback from the lake was uh, not 100 feet, it was 75 feet, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And then, so it was, it was different from what it, what it is from 89 coming this way up forward, okay? So a lot of these camps around here were, were, were uh, done uh, in, you know, 89 prior. And if, if so you kind of got to go, I think, in this particular case, you've got to consider what, what's the date. You go 89, 89 prior, so okay, 89 back to, the, the the next ordinance update was 1977, 72, you said? It was, it was the 70s. So okay, yeah. so at that point, particular point in time, uh, between 89 and 70s, was this little uh, um, shed he had, was, was it legal at that time? It wouldn't have been legal if you didn't get a permit. All right, so how, okay. All right, well, how do you know if you got a permit? It's up to the applicant. Well, These are town records. Well, okay. well, we're the town records. Let's see it. Let's see the town Well, record. we don't have a record of a permit. So, how are we going to show you a record of a well, why permit? Not? Why don't we? Don't have. Why not? Why does the applicant didn't apply it? So, really? That's we the have whole issue. Huh? The file has several correspondence and records of prior building, but there's nothing in the file where it would show. That's good. Therefore, that's it was not permitted. All right. All right. On our record, we have records record. for that house being built. Yeah. Right. And shed alterations. And... Okay. So, anyway. Good. That, that 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 makes a difference. Good. All right. So there's no there's no record of it being done. Our records that we have are correct. So best. Yeah. That's, our file does not have any right. record of a building permit or a woodshed. Right. And that's that's where the attorney is saying if you don't can't prove that it was I understand that right but I didn't know I right. so anyway uh, just, and regardless of the setbacks the position of this is now forty five feet from the lake correct yes yeah. so whether it was seventy five feet or hundred it's irrelevant because he's applying for it. And, as it's a new structure, it's being would have to be applied for as being new. Okay, to the today's rules it was not shown to be legal. So, is your is your client at all prepared, or not say prepared isn't the word, but? Uh, uh, receptive at all to a woodshed that set back 100 feet from the water? Well, it's not a woodshed anymore since they don't burn wood. It's a storage shed for their stuff that they use on the lake. And it's a steep hill. 
<laughs> and it's just that they're elderly folk and it's kind of hard to get up and down that hill. Um, I guess uh, I can't say I understand the, the actual situation, but I don't think in my mind the planning board can approve a new structure that's not water dependent. And people would argue that yes, if you like jackets and things of that nature mm -hmm. are involved, then it's a water dependent structure. But uh, the legislature numerous years ago made it clear that uh, even a boathouse is not water dependent. Uh, yeah, it should, prior to that, people pretty much assume the boat has for water dependent. So I can't argue it. And we have four other members of the planning board here. Yeah. Um, but so but I'm just stating what my feeling is that it's not a water dependent structure. And if we treat it as a new structure, it has to meet the setback requirement. Of 100 feet. About 100 feet. Well, if that's the way it's going to be, I guess that's the way it's going to be. The owner admittedly said that he didn't think it was permitted originally. So but he, he didn't build it. Somebody else yeah. did. So. Yeah, any other thoughts? No. And how do we want to proceed here? Do, do you, Bill, want to modify the application? Do you want to come back? Uh, we'll, we'll table it. Are you telling me to modify it to build it at 100 feet? Yeah. Or <laughs> do I need, I need a permit to do that? Uh, I think what he's asking, do you want to table your application for the time being until we find a location that is beyond 100 foot and then come back and get a permit to build it behind 100 feet? Okay, I'm going to need a permit to build it behind 100 feet. Yes. 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 All right. Yeah. So I guess we'll table it and I'll draw up a I'll, I'll ask the owner where he thinks the best place for it is. Okay. And then we'll put that out on site map. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then get that from it. And then I don't think you have a problem in any way. Okay. Uh, one, one thing I will bring up is, uh, of course, it's somewhere here. But anyway, uh, the issue is this is in a resource protection slope <laughs> district, at least uh, as I understand it. And if when you build the thing, is it going to take excavation or is it hand digging uh, to construct? Oh, wait, no. Well, on this side of the hill, we're going to have to pick a place that's relatively flat. But, yeah. Well, it's not flat. But yeah, it's going to have okay. longer legs on one side. The there. real issue, the reason I bring it up is that the ordinance in section 15X, I think it is. Yeah says that if it's on in the resource protection slope district you needed a, a, a erosion control plan drafted by a certified professional engineer for construction on mm. you know, yeah. i heard this are you one thing. no but we work with the uh, uh, yeah. uh, water bill yeah the reason i asked it if it was just somebody going up there with a uh, a shovel and digging up, digging four places to set the the foundation or whatever. Right. I wouldn't expect that you'd go get a registered engineer, but if you've got a backhoe and whatever digging it, then I would say that that would probably, when you come back, you might want to have a. So if you want to put some frost sleeves in the ground, we can yeah. dig them by hand and put them underneath that report. Yeah, I would say that. My feeling is I wouldn't worry about. The erosion control plan or, okay. or hand dug hole. Okay. That's the, basically been our policy throughout this the time. All right. Yeah. Oh, we start, we are going to have to have a vote, I guess, uh, if we decide that we want to table this. I'm, I think it's the appropriate thing to do at this point. You, you need, need a motion. Or yeah. yeah. I'll make a motion that we. Uh, Table. Do we have a second? A second. Uh, well, we table the um, Bill Hunt and David Mazur application until further submittals. 
and seconded by Yanis. Um, the world view of the voting and the tenants. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I vote yes as well. Uh, so anyway, if you if you come back with a location, uh, set back on your feet from the water, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Uh, I, I can't say it because I can't speak for four other people, but I think you'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let me ask. So it's it's got to be a hundred feet. So even if he's under his square footage, I'm not sure if he is or not. Well, between yeah. seventy-five and hundred. Still, what there. I was going to bring up, and thanks for bringing that up. I was going to, and I think I saw in the information that was. Structure current structure is like sixteen hundred square feet. That's an error. But if it's less than a thousand, and you attach it to the structure, you could do that. Okay, talk to me here. <laughs> you're allowed within seventy five feet of the water. Yes. You're you're allowed a thousand square feet of, of structure. It's a footprint of your structure. Right. So if you had, if this thing here is, what is the size of this thing, 8 by 10 or something like that? Yes. 80 square feet. If your square footage was 920 square feet within 75 feet of the water, you could add 80 square feet to the structure. It would be considered part of your principal structure at that point. It would have to be beyond the 75 foot mark. It, it would not have to. It wouldn't when, have just yeah. on the existing structure. Yeah. Okay. Not forward, but sideways. Uh, yeah. But you can't go toward the water. It's okay. already too close to the water. But you could go on the side. You could okay. go on the back. As long as the total square footage is not more than a thousand square feet. Okay. I'm going to have to get some tight figures yeah. on the building itself. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did the planning board agree with that? Just a rough, just a rough with that plan there, we're at about 900. So, so um, you couldn't make it work. But yeah. now we're getting into, you're going to have to excavate because you're on the hillside. <laughs> so you need the engineer. The right we can do that. Do you, does the other planning board members agree with that? Or? Yeah, if it's under, if, it, if he has space for it, then we can attach it to the yeah. building. <laughs> and if you're just going to do, I mean, at Great Lux with just pads and styrofoam, uh, you don't even need to do any excavation uh, for a shed. Yeah, uh, sure. I think he was talking about if it's if it's sloped up into this hill. Is it? Yeah, there's slope yeah. that, that side of that. Yeah. Uh, is there there's some deck? Any deck at all on there? Yeah, no, there, but there's a side for the house that's applicable. Yeah, yeah, you just attach okay. with some string. Yeah. Just keep in mind that any patio yeah. or decking or anything would count toward the right thousand square feet. Yeah, okay. there's yeah, there's patio there. We're gonna need to measure this yeah. because that patio part of that's gonna have to come up. Yeah. Unless you go on top of the patio, so you can write the footprint. Yeah. Do the measure the footprint. So you go on top of the patio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you could build on top of the patio. Then you wouldn't count the patio. The square footage would be the deck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually, uh, because the patio, if the patio is attached to the structure, main structure, you would be essentially setting it on top of it, and it would be part of that structure. If you got an existing deck, it would be part of the existing deck. So that's an option. So you'd be blocking your access to the stairs going down the house if you use the patio. Well, because when we take some when we take some measurements, talk to the owner, yeah. and then come up with some kind of game plan that's going to work. Yeah, it sounds like you have a couple options. It's yeah, possible. It's possible. possible. Yeah. So you have a thousand feet to play with. A thousand square feet total. On the first total. Total. Yeah. total. Yeah. So whatever you have left over, yep. under a thousand, that's what you can. Nice. Okay. All so, right. But Thank did you. I understand? About the excavation, where you said you can do that, you said you're going to need the engineer. Well, if we excavated, but in this case, we're not going to excavate at all. So, we're all going to, yeah. If we're on a deck, it wouldn't need any excavation. And if it's well, 
on a flat area, you're saying you wouldn't need it. Right. Excavation. Can we just, for the sake of clarity, define what attaching uh, would look like? Yeah, I would say attached by uh, essentially one wall or attached so to have a wall. shared wall. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> or it could put stringers in, like if there's any deck, you could assist us some stringers and run the stringers, you know, run it off. Okay. I think that we can make this work. All right. No, you're sorry to have you come back a third time. <laughs> no, but this might be a better option for us to do. Yeah. So if I do versus putting it back 100 feet, which is going to be problematic. Yeah. I understand that your client's probably somewhat elderly. Uh, they're, they're seniors. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Uh, I wonder if that ticket. That factors into practicality, the age of a homeowner. Oh. Rules are rules, regardless of that. Yeah. Age, well. Well, handicap is special, right? Not necessarily. No. But there's provisions can be yeah, made provisions. for the handicapped person. Yeah. So once that person expires, the provision right. is taken away. And the other thing is the, the provision for the handicap is basically access to the structure. Access and egress, mm. not, not for a shed or to get out of the water. Yes. Uh, Hans, do you think if uh, Bill is ready, we could get on the agenda two weeks from now? Or the agenda is full. It's full. Yes. Yeah, so okay. We've got to review okay. what Bill's going to come up with and get him on <clears throat> the next. This is Mr. Bell. Okay. All right. I'll have something for you in two weeks. Okay. Good. There you go. Next one. <clears throat> Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. <clears throat> okay. Um, by the way, Hans, how did this say? Uh, not being at the last meeting, did you get a complaint from somebody that somebody was building something? Uh, he's got it framed up in the middle of the woods. You know, when you find the frame structure, I know we're only permits so, yeah. yeah. And with all the tree loss we had this winter, I've been running all of every nook and cranny of town. Okay. We'll move on to the next item. So if we could have got away with it, we would have. Pardon me? We would have got away with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Jennifer, is it Jennifer Klaus, Jennifer Klaus? Klaus. Klaus, okay. Uh, you were proposing to essentially jack up, I'll let you explain what you want to do. For the I'm looking to jack up the camp to yeah. maintain it. Oh, okay. And this is a, uh, I'm not uh, a builder. Greg can probably help me out and you can as well. But are we essentially talking about like a frost wall type thing? Uh, or what what's the difference yeah. between a frost wall and a whatever? It's like it's it just wants to a strip it footing. So it's just gonna be a footing mm -hmm. rather than a pad, it's gonna be a footing that goes across. Yeah. It's not gonna go all the way across. it's just gonna be on certain areas. Perimeter. Just the perimeter. Okay. Not yeah. all of the camp all the way around. Yep, the entire perimeter. Okay. Yeah, it's basically, okay. I get to the point of doing it, I've been doing it so many years now, you, you dig a pad up there, you dig one up eight feet away, and you dig one up eight feet away, yeah, right set, there. you set a little cookie down in there, and you don't know what it's going to do, if it does stay, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. and I just found that. So how deep is this going? I pull, I pull the organic. So when I go down, when I get to, you know what I mean by the organic? Yeah. That first 18 to 12 or whatever inches. And then if I'm on a slope, I step it and I stay down below that organic. And I pour that foot. In. Then I can put drainage around it. I put foam, I can bury it to the top of the footer. At that point, we, we buried all the stones already there to the top of the footer. Then we stack it with foam, four foot sheets. You got 16 inch foot, so you got 16 inches on this side of the footer. 16 outside the building, and then put back that organic, and that all goes down in that organic layer. Mm -hmm. Basically, the building don't really change much. 
you know, within a few inches or something. But you know, it ain't like we're jacking it up three feet, pouring it on the ground, and coming way up with it. it. Just it's a solution I came up with because people love their camp. They want to keep their camp nice. They don't want to jack it every five years, and they don't want to spend fifty thousand dollars to put a frost wall up there, or seventy thousand dollars, or whatever it is, you know where they use it 10 weeks a year, you know? So the deal, the deal wasn't working to save these buildings. And, you know, I basically got tired of pouring pads. And when, when I'm going in and some people are turning into their year round home and they are putting it on a cross wall and they are, you know, living there now or whatever. So, you know, that's what I was like, why we'll just cut the wall out of it. and. They can save 25 grand and then now they have something that's permanent. You know, you're not going to lose that. And it's not going to go anywhere mm -hmm. ever again because you took that organic away. You know, put back gravel and drainage and, you know, and no, it'll have an outfall line, you know, and everything. Which hers, I think I can bring the outfall line right out of the right face of the lake, right out of the right corner. I'm not real deep for one, and it can just outfall right there, kind of on her property, right at her property line. I don't have to go into the lake like we do sometimes, you know. Sometimes we'll get to go right to the high water mark. So, um, so it's basically that, you know, and it's a savior, you know, buy it once kind of thing. You can jack it for the next 20, 30, 40 years, five times at seven, eight thousand, ten thousand dollars a pop, or you can do it once or a year. Yeah. And beyond. Are there any comments from the questions or comments from the board? Um, the outfall pipe. Yeah. Did you bring it to the stone waterfront to avoid erosion of the soils? So I bring it when I do my stone, when I do my outfall, my drainage lines, they are crushed stone all the way to the outfall. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, I just don't want it hitting soil and becoming so basically what he's saying he'd rather have it come into a lake. Right. Yeah, I'd rather have a little lake because yeah. it's clean water. Yeah. And yeah. Why make it dirty by putting it on the ground and making it run across the ground? Right. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm just saying we can go where, you know, right there. It's going to come off that right corner because it's too tree rooty and too much involved on the other side. I think there's a tree there. That, is it a tree we want to take or what? On or the right side? No, on the right. On the right side. There's one right in front of the right corner. There's, is it you guys discussed that? Yeah. Yeah. There's two. And one's been taken down. Okay. Yeah. All right. You need a permit to take a tree down that close, obviously. Oh, you may have to come down on the Hans, have you been to the site? Yes. Okay. It's been a while since the while they're prior to the snow. It's so, been a while for me, too, but I can kind of remember it. But yeah, good, good I just day. wanted to bring it up I didn't want, so we don't get right there and go, oh, we're going to cut this tree. Yeah. We need it there because so we get time right now to hide everything else. I'm thinking as to. Meet meet or talk with Hans and deal with it at that point. Uh, the tree, the yeah. tree, yeah. Whether tree. another tree needs to be replanted. Um, right. It all depends on what you've got in front. To do what they do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the only the only question or issue I have, and that's why I asked that Hans have been to the site, is when a foundation, the, the ordinance in under non-conforming structure says when you add a foundation. Uh, to a non-conforming structure, uh, you need to move it back to the greatest practical extent. And that's it. the issue here is practical extent. Is it practical uh, to move this thing back at all? Not at all. You got a 2,000 pound uh, gallon holding tank. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's this slate pipe coming right out the back of the house and it's sitting right. right to, then it's not going to... Yeah. Yeah. It's on the nine acres, right? A lot of times we do move them back though. People like it and we like it too. Mm -hmm. We'll put the we'll big foundation behind it. Yeah. Then they get a nice front yard. But if this hurts, she's. We don't expect you're going to haul the uh, holding tank out of the ground and move yes. it back by the feet. But yeah. yeah. We've got holding tank, short little log, and then the road is right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right. Uh, any other comments, questions? Any from the applicant? Oh, I had one one other question. Uh, I just, I'm not very good at reading deeds and all that, but apparently you have interest in it with like four other people. My mother, my aunt, and my uncle. Okay. I just want to ask the board, and I'm not an attorney by any stretch. We don't need to get uh, authorization or whatever from the other three people uh, as part of this. My thinking is if there's an issue, it's a civil issue between the the, the parties if they ever have a fight over something. Right. Uh, we don't need to have all four people. I don't think so. Nowhere it's family. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of my thinking too. So, okay. All right. So yes, you are see we on the deed. Pardon me, man. No, she, she they stay uh, submitted the deed, you know, her name is in the deed. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Um are we ready for the findings of that? Um do we need a motion or do we do the findings of fact first? Or? Um so we to the findings. Do we do we add, need a motion to what to go to the findings of that? Well, to, yeah, to her. Okay. Yeah. Do we have any motions to present? Yeah, I'll make a motion that. Um, well, actually, we can't accept it until we do the findings. All right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, we exactly. can't accept it. Yeah. So, so let's take the findings. I think we just go to the findings of fact, and uh, this is going to be a little bit lengthy. Uh, you won't be here till midnight, but <laughs> it's not a five minute process. But, um, we uh, have to answer a whole bunch of questions regarding uh, pertaining to this sections of the ordinance that this project falls under. Um, and I'm going to read the beginning of the findings of fact. The applicants on uh, well, today is the Apply for a shoreline zoning permit for jacking and removing existing pads to replace the strip footer foundation. The application was presented to the planning board on 418. Uh, on, so why does it say 5224? It's got both of them on hand, but uh, I can cross out the yeah, cross out the one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. These findings of facts and, and conclusions of law were developed in conjunction with consideration of the permit application. Conclusions of law. Based on the application material, application materials, testimony, statements, evidence, documents, and other materials submitted to it, and the above findings of fact, the Board of Belgrade Planning Board finds that the project is, is or not permitted. Um, is. Penny, yep, it is. is. Yeah. Uh, I'll uh, say your name just for the oh. name. Penny. Is. Peter. Peter. Is. And Nick. Is. Craig. Is. And I also say it is. Um, okay, under section 14, table one of the ordinance. And further makes the following conclusions based on the applicable provisions in section 16D of the ordinance. Uh, now, where these are where the questions come in that we'll be going through with the board. Uh, we'll maintain safe and healthful conditions. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. Peter. Uh, Peter, yes. Nick? Yes. Craig? Yes. And I say yes as well, five. Or none again will not result in water pollution, erosion, or sedimentation of surface waters. Penny? Yes. Peter? Yes. Nick? Yes. Craig? Yes. And I as well. Five zero. Will adequately, adequately provide for the disposal of all wastewater. Yes. Peter? Yes. Yes. Uh, no, it's applicable. Oh, yes. Pardon me. Is it even applicable? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Good. I, I, go, I, I go down and I pump the tank before I even start the job. Right. Yes. Because I'm going to yank the pipe off. And we talked about having to move the, we wouldn't want to move it for five feet. <laughs> so. No, we're going we're gonna to pump it. So we pump it. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've, I've lost myself here already. Uh, did we vote on will adequately provide for the disposal of all wastewater? Yeah, was that the yeah, exactly. That was the issue. Okay. We're still 5-0. Yep. Will not have an adverse impact on spawning grounds, fish, aquatic life, bird, or other wildlife habitat. Penny. Is that applicable? Uh, well, I think yeah. all of these things we vote on, it's the other section that we decide whether it's applicable or not. Oh, okay. Um, sure. Yes. Peter? Yes. Nick? I, I think there would be no. It's, it's, well, no. 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 Yes. So that's a yes. We all are not. We're not. Right. Yes. 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 Okay. And yes for me as well. We'll conserve shore cover and visual as well as actual points of access to inland waters. Penny? Yes. Peter? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yep. I as well. We'll protect archaeological and historic resources as, as designated in the comprehensive plan. It's will if you think it will. Yeah. Penny. Is that applicable? Oh, uh, we're not protecting. Yes. Peter? Uh, yes. Nick? Yes. Yes. Greg? I as well. We'll avoid problems associated with flood, floodplain development and use. Yes. 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 And I as well. Five, nothing. Okay. Now, here's where we uh, go down and determine which provisions of the ordinance apply. Uh, and uh, by a vote of whatever the board found that this standard was met based on evidence in the record and further as follows. Okay. Minimum lot standards. Or I'd say NA. Principal and accessory structures. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, we vote at the end of this. Do we vote on yeah, these? At the end. Yeah. So oh, yeah. we're going to through the side once so like yeah, okay. and with them we vote. So we vote. principal accessory is, is appropriate. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Campgrounds. No. Na. <laughs> Individual private campsites. Okay. Na. It's like commercial and industrial are... uses. <laughs> you got a, uh, a factory out there? Na. <laughs> <laughs> Parking areas. NA. Yeah. Roads and driveways. NA. Signs. NA. Stormwater runoff. Yes. Yes. Septic waste disposal systems. You've got the holding tank, right? Nothing's going to change uh, as far as that, let's say NA. Well, oh, why would you? Nothing's going to change. Okay. Right. Uh, I mean, they have one, but yeah. nothing they're working you're gonna, on. You're gonna, it, okay. You got to keep continue on continuing on this design. You know, is, is, is it a sump pump or what? At least be older one. No, no, it's a it's a holding tank. Okay. It's so a, all of the all the waste goes yeah, in the holding tank, pump. and we don't get it pumped. Right. I'm just wondering if we, we want to consider to make sure it is pumped up. Oh yeah, well, it's that's not, not really uh, part of this application. Have anything to do with it. Okay. And they did, they did show that it was pumped out at some point with a receipt, whether that was last week or two yeah. months ago. I don't know, but anyway, okay. Essential services, NA. Mineral exploration and extraction. You got a gravel pit on the site? <laughs> <laughs> NA. Agriculture. Timber harvesting. 
-hmm. Clearing and removal of vegetation for activities other than timber harvesting. You did mention you're going to take a tree, so, so we will consider that as part of this. Uh, okay. Hazard trees, you don't need to take any hazard trees down at site. No, that's the tree that was taken down. Yeah. Oh, is that a hazard tree? It was a hazard tree, yes. Oh, the one that was already taken previously. Pardon me? Previously. Okay, so no, there's no, another no. one that. Yeah. Okay. Exemptions to clearing and vegetation removal requirements in a revegetation requirements. Uh, I'm going to check it off, but only because Nick, uh, Hans may decide that uh, uh, <coughs> they need a tree. <laughs> it needs to be replaced if, if not. Erosion and sedimentation control, yes. Do you know what you're going to use? Are you going to use uh, ECM or? I use a uh, silk bed first, and then I got to run the bark mulch, then the hay. A we have A around. And you're be certified. Yes, sir. Yeah. You're allowing the stabilization. No, nothing happened. We're not touching it. No, we're going into the civil uh, drain line by positive. Soils. Yes, we'll put it, check it down. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a yeah. big issue. Water quality, yes. Historical and archaeological, yes. Yeah. Archaeological resources doesn't apply. Resource protection doesn't apply. Okay. Okay, you have to, I don't pay a whole lot of attention I'm Sarah to doing this, but do, do we uh, vote on this before we talk about conditions of approval? I guess it really... Um, we can fill the conditions in there then vote on it. Okay, yeah, okay. There's a standard condition is one. I'll read that after yeah. we vote on it. So we have... Uh, uh, Let's see. Are we ready to vote to approve the, or do we have, we have to vote on, I, I haven't done this. Uh, That's okay. Voting, uh, you know, we just went through this applies and this yeah. doesn't. It seems we need to vote on whether all of those things are Go ahead and yeah, I don't think you can vote enough. You can, it doesn't hurt to vote, right? Uh, well, we should. Well, we need, how about a, a, a motion? A motion to uh, say the that we accept the findings of facts. And, and, I'll make a motion to accept the findings. Okay. We have a second? Second. Peter's second. Uh, okay. Um, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Make a motion. Yeah. Oh, yes. Question. Well, well Nick made the motion. Well, yeah. Do you want to read the standard conditions for the? Because that's on that paper that you're voting to accept. Yeah. Okay. I will read the conditions uh, of approval needed to meet required shoreline zoning ordinance findings in Section 16D. It, and this is something that you will need to pay attention to. One of the standard conditions is. To manage stormwater runoff from new or expanded structures in accordance with section, section 15I of the Belgrade Shoreland Zoning Ordinance and the Maine Department of Environment, Environmental Protection's DDP best management practices, um, as outlined in the Conservation Practices for Homeowners publication. Such measures are to be put in place prior to building use. No, this is a standing condition that applies to all permits unless deemed unnecessary by the planning board. Um, basically, you need to use DEP's best management practices for soil erosion and, and runoff. But, um, and basically what that is, is 
Would we like to see um, where the drip line is coming off the eaves? We like to see crushed stone. So you take like a four inch trench full of fill it full of crushed stone. So the water lands on the crushed stone and dissipates. That's all it is. We and, usually have extra stone left over. Yeah, and and that's, that's the DEP press best yeah. practice thing. Yeah. Well, and that's so, the most simple. There's more. Oh, well, yeah. That's the most simple. Right. And, um, and that's basically what we're looking for for that. What that was just said. Uh, so on your drip lines, on just your on your right on your, and that doesn't need to have anything. Any, no. I know you're gonna have drainage below, but this doesn't have to have any drainage. You know, it's just gonna be the crushed stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah we usually do that anyway. Yeah, there's usually some there's some stone usually around left for that. Drainage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we've got a motion and a second. And so we will vote. Mrs. Morale. Yes. Uh, can we put one more condition in there? In writing, just okay. so it's on the paper, the uh, extension of the outfall to the light. Okay. Uh, yes. Essentially, the outfall of the outfall drain will extend to the drain line. The drain line. Okay. Now, is it legal to run an outfall pipe for drainage water directly into the lake? Yes. Illegal? It's legal. Yeah, it's legal. It's it's a it's best practice. Legal. Okay. Now, so this. the condition is that the drainage from the uh, foundation. foundation shall travel through crushed stone uh, to just the limits of the. Just said that it's extended to the. Like to the lake, and that's okay. The new best practice that we there. So that will be condition number two. Okay. So are we ready now? Yes. Benny. Yes. Peter. Yes. Nick. Yes. Chris. Yes. And myself, yes. Uh, um, I assume we just voted to approve the application. Well, the now's application is complete, we right? Voted to accept both. Accept the the oh, yeah, we, no, we accept voted that. to accept the findings back. Yeah, and, uh, an application complete. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we accept uh, the permit of Jennifer Klaus uh, with the two conditions. Okay. Uh, outflow going to the lake and the DEB best practice management. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, second. We have a second? I'll uh, second that. Okay. That was uh, approval proposed by uh, motion by Craig, seconded by Nick. Now we can vote on whether we're approving the application uh, in front of us. Yes. Penny. Yes. Peter. Yes. Craig. I mean, Craig. Yes. Craig. Yes. Okay. I vote yes as well. You have your permit. Uh, you will be getting that from the town office or from Hans in the mail. Mail, or are you going to be around to pick it up? It's going to be a thick packet. Yeah, I think yeah I'll, let, I'll call you and let you know. Okay. And then do you communicate with the EB or do I? For the uh, permit barrel. Yeah, he, he was just waiting for. Yeah, that's just I'll give you your copy and then forward it to him. I can yeah. probably electronically yeah. 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 send him a copy. Okay. Uh, I'll email him. Yeah, and EDP is changing the protocols a little bit. Yeah. Well, people can get DVRs and saying I got a permit from running and doing the job without telling the local players. Uh, yeah. Well, now they're making us approve the permit. Right. Everybody knows what's going on. 
what's next on our agenda? You're, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Thank you're not very welcome. Very sure. but you're but allowed you're, to leave if you'd like. It's right. been in my family for 64 years. 64. And I'd like another 64 out of it. So <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Well, very well. Well. Take care. No, that's my brother. Man. That's right. Old business. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. Actually, Sarah has some things, but seeing that she's not yeah. here, we take get them down the road too. So I've got nothing. Okay. Uh, we've got a full. Cool you said Sarah. Were you talking about the yeah. nominations for chair? Apparently, that's the elections that got on the agenda. So okay. that yeah. there's other discussions that she wanted to have. Okay. I meant to call George before he left to see whether he would be willing to, when I thought it was going to be before us tonight, whether he'd be willing to continue to serve as the vice chair, but I didn't get a hold of him. <laughs> Doesn't matter, and we're not dealing with that tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's see, you don't have anything. I've got nothing. Oh, we got to approve the minutes from last meeting. Do we have anybody running for chair or vice chair? Uh, all I know is that here's what I know. Sarah called me when she thought it was going to be on the agenda tonight and said that we were going to vote for a chair and a vice chair. I asked her if she would be willing to do it again if we decided, and she said she would. And that's when I was going to call George to see whether he'd be willing to be the vice chair, and I didn't get him. But we don't have to worry about tonight, but I do know that Sarah... We'll take the job if we put her in. Is there anybody here who would like yeah, to have one of those jobs? <laughs> um, anyway. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey. <laughs> okay. Uh, minutes. Let's, uh, let's take a few minutes or a minute or two to uh, read the minutes if you haven't and determine whether we need to add um, make any changes to the minutes. And and stated it was not an option, and the site is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the site is a mess. Yeah, the site is a mess. So there were a lot of trees down yeah. at the uh, other site. Tree trying steep hills. I called the uh, suburban propane and told them to come pull the tank. On the site because their line was running from the surface of the ground and then they never dug it in mm -hmm. and they're all trees laying all over and I just see somebody coming in the ground and mm -hmm. trees and pulling cocaine right now so I closed the tank off all the suburban and come forward so it, it didn't even meet code so Yeah, I'm, uh, this thing that we went through where I checked off it either applied and not applicable or was applicable, is that the part where Sarah always writes on the uh, 
uh, applicant submittals and the public record or whatever. Yeah. Yes. I'll add that to it. Do you all agree that, that uh, based on the applicant submissions and the public record? Okay, are we all through? Are we... One question on the minutes. Um, it says discussion of next steps for ordinances. This is page two of the talk with multiple committees. A letter from Mr. Bradley. I take it that that's the Lakes and Natural Resources Committee, Mr. Bradley. Uh, yeah. It really doesn't say, but it says down in the decision. Yeah. So uh, to me, yeah, this um, discussion doesn't really say. Maybe, maybe after Mr. Bradley, we can put representative of Lakes. Yeah, and Natural Resources yeah. Committee. Yeah. And then in the decision, they can just say LNRS or. Instead of writing it up, I'll, I'll, I'll put saying. it up above and then just yeah. put in out. Uh, uh, so, what we're doing is we're adding a letter from Mr. Bradley representing the Lakes and Natural Resource Committee. Yeah. And then down below, we will change Lakes and Natural Resources Committee to LNRC. Right. And, and after you put it up under discussion, put it in parentheses yeah. um, LNR. Uh -huh. okay. See, so they don't know what it means down in the system. Okay, yep. And our LNRC up above as well in parentheses. Right. Yeah, if uh, Kelsey doesn't get that, I can fill her in if she has questions. Okay. Yeah. I have something on the same, on that old business too. We're not, there's nothing to do with ordinance changes. So there's no ordinance change going on. There, um, so ordinance change is going to be reworded. Okay, um, where is that now? It's right at number one. Ordinance number one. Maybe ordinance review would be better, yes. Number one would be page two. Changes page two. Right, the, the bold letters. Yeah. Ordinance changes. Oh, oh, I was sitting there reading the paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, ordinance review. Yeah, that'd be better than changes. Yeah. We're not changing anything. Yeah. As of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ordinance review instead of ordinance changes. Uh, yes. Old business number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? With that, uh, we, do we have a motion? I make a motion to accept the minutes. So we go only. March 21st as amended. Okay, do we have a second? Second. You're an official member tonight. You better second. <laughs> second. Uh, motion by Craig, seconded by Penny. All those in favor? Penny? Yes. Uh, yes. 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 And I say yes as well. That's all five of us, in case you didn't know who said yes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, previous yeah. minutes, CEO has nothing for us tonight. Well, I don't know. You have nothing for old business, but you said we have a full a full meeting next week. And I mean next meeting. Yeah, because last meeting got canceled, so everybody's kind of got pushed down, rearranged a little bit. So uh, uh, David Ayers won't be on that one either. Though I'll not be on that one either. I don't think he's on the 16th of mm -hmm. May. And no news on the appeal uh, for that parking lot that they were worried about. They're not being appealed. It's not worried appeal. Right. Well, 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 the only reason that came to us is because it was a change of use from a commercial property to basically a non-commercial property, and it was formality. So. There's really no appealing the decision. The yeah. appeal period must have gone by for that, hasn't it? So I guess I'm missing what we're talking about here. Yeah. The parking lot? Yeah. I saw some emails about that, but I didn't quite grasp what was going on. And yeah, they started throwing terminology out that they shouldn't have been. They started doing. So a citizen who I represented at the hearing as being opposed to it because of the added traffic on West Road, um, is still not satisfied and wants to 
block this parking lot from occurring. We got an email. The parking lot is not for the park. The parking lot is for the town. Right. People can park there and walk up to the fish stand. They can walk to the center for all season. They can walk to the town beach. They can walk into town. Right. They can walk to Sunset Grill. It's for the whole town. Right. Right. So the citizen's primary concern is when they do the concert at the park, well, that everybody's going to be racing to leave at the same time and speeding up West Road. Why would they speed any more after a concert than they would um, with or without a, a parking lot? Same people are there. There's, exactly. There's if anything, parking. you might slow it down because you got cars coming out now, so you can't speed down that. Yeah, we so, but the purpose of the planning board is, you know, doing a, a business review is to determine is this going to have business going to add traffic mm -hmm. or is it going to impact an area? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we look at a, a broad picture of everything that's going to be affected. And this is going the opposite way it's going from a business to a public mm -hmm. access parking area that. Will serve people coming to the town anyways. The parking lot's not going to be a draw. People aren't going to come there and say, "Hey, let's park this parking lot." Or take them off the street, right? So, and if you get rid of that one exit, I mean, yeah, if you get rid of that one exit, then all cars will have to go up that way. The only exit, around. and then come around, and, and that's, I think, even more congesting, congesting than yeah. anything. Because yeah, there's always the one person that's going to do the opposite of whatever everybody else is doing. Yeah. But we got an email from Sarah today about that, about the woman, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we did this morning. Yeah, and she's going to be at every meeting now. Well, she's not here. Yeah. Right. Oh, I'll, I'll talk in no action? Okay. <laughs> So, she might be here. But again, <laughs> Sarah discussed an appeal. It was a discussion and a mention of a process that doesn't apply here. Okay. okay. All right. So let's move on. Uh, yes. Uh, is there anything else that anybody needs to bring up? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. May I make a motion to adjourn? You can. <laughs> Penny makes a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? There you go. Okay. Get in there, Pete. Thank you. Oh, now yeah. we'll, we'll vote. We'll vote. Yes, vote. Penny. Yes. yes. Peter. Yes. Two big talkers. Great. Right. Right. Yes. Right. 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 I guess you could back to ask. Yeah. Right. You vote to adjourn? Adjourn. All right. <laughs>